this is the watch that started it all off for me again. Um, I was looking for a, a simple everyday watch, I guess, that could be worn in a dress situation or every day. And I had stopped wearing watches for a while, but um, I'm, I'm heavily into menswear. And so a watch was just missing out of that equation. And so I started looking at watches again. I was looking for dress watches and mainly an automatic watch. And I came across this Seiko SUR307. I watched some videos and it was great. It presented very nice and I got it. So in this video, I'm gonna show you a little bit about this watch and how it came, how I got it, uh, what I paid for it and um, how it looks on some different straps. I alluded to the fact that this could be a one watch collection or just the only watch a man has. Um, and this is a very, very nice example. Um, so I'm gonna go through some strap options based on what I have here, everything, you know, I bought and um, see how it goes. Okay, so stay tuned. I have some straps here. I just keep them in this plastic bag. And um, this is the box the watch came in. Um, you know, basic Seiko white box. And uh, the pillow. Here's a little baggie I keep the extra links in. Came with this little thing, sapphire crystal. Um, Here's where I keep the bracelet. Came with some instructions on how to resize the bracelet with what they call the new link removal system bracelet. This was the hang tag. And they note sapphire crystal right here on the tag. It also came with this little tool to remove the links. Came in handy. Um, and this other tag that said, new link removal system bracelet. So it's pins with a spring collar. So it's a little, I guess they're calling that their new link system. Here's the original bracelet that it came on as a Seiko class, double push button release. It's a nice satisfying click there. I have it in two pieces here. Um, this bracelet is not bad. It's not heavy, but it does have some weight to it. This, the links are not solid. You can see the creases there where uh, it's folded. I don't know if that's coming through. Let's see here. But um, it'll work. It's got that nice satin finish with the brushed faux fifth links. So it should be one, two, three, four, five links, but it's really just one link. And you know, not a deal breaker by any means and inside here I have uh, miscellaneous pins and the end links that's one of the collars that it comes with and one of the spring collars and the pin that it comes with to adjust and then here you have the end link it's really thin, but on the wrist, you won't notice any of that. Okay, so onto the straps. So here are five aftermarket straps that I bought all on uh, Amazon. They're all leather, except for this one, which is sailcloth. And 
um, I bought them for different watches, but I, I'll show how they can be applied, worn on this watch, the uh, SUR307, in a different situation. The strap, the bracelet that I have on this watch, as I showed in my very first YouTube video, is from a Presage bracelet. It's really nice. It's heavy, solid links, double butterfly, push button clasp. It works really well and just elevates this watch in my opinion. The watch is so thin, being a little under nine millimeters, that um, the bracelet, with the addition of this bracelet, makes it have some good weight for those of you who like a brace a watch on a bracelet that has some good weight and feels substantial this bracelet definitely helps achieve that but not everybody has a presage watch or a presage bracelet so forgive the noise i'm having some uh construction done around here so but um yeah we're going to put it on these, these straps, and you let me know which one you think works best, okay? So let's do that now. I'm going to grab my trusty <laughs> Benier watch repair tool kit. I showed in another video. And I'm going to attempt to remove this bracelet. using the pin bar removal tool. Okay, so let's get the watch. Well, first, usually what I do to make it easier to remove bracelets is I remove the, the clasp so that you have more access in here, but with this type of bracelet, um, that's gonna be a little bit more difficult because uh, of the lack of pins and collars. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna try to do it with the bracelet on. So just put the watch in there, tighten that up a bit. And uh, using the forked end here, on this, I'm going to try to remove the spring bars. Let's see if I can get that done. Maybe I should get some glasses. One sec. Okay. Trusty readers. Get in there. I'm gonna pry and lift. Okay. I want to do this off camera. I'll be right back. Okay, I finally got this thing out. Uh, remove the spring bar and the collar, I mean, the uh, end link so that. I don't lose anything. So here, take the watch out of here. Let's just get it shined up a little bit. Maybe this would be a good time to use those finger cuts, but uh, yeah, I don't mind a couple of smudges or whatever. But you know, this is the best time, I guess, to get in there. You wipe the watch and then you instantly put fingerprints back on it, so. All right. <laughs> Sunburst. <laughs> on the case back, and it says Sapphire Crystal. You see that there? It's not coming through too good, but whatever. This is about the straps. So with these straps, these two 
on the same strap from Vina Creations. This one is 19 millimeter lug width. And you can see I tried to shave a little bit off to fit it on a watch that has an 18 millimeter lug width. Um, but both of these I got from Vina Creations. The company is out in Vietnam. Vina is, I guess, Vietnam Creations. And this is genuine alligator. And you can tell by the pattern on it, none of the straps that they sell have the same pattern because no two alligators have the same pattern on the skin. So if I take this, this is the 20 millimeter, this is the 19 millimeter. And um, you can clearly see the difference. Even the color is a little bit different on them, but it's a really nice blue. This one is lined in black calf and this one in a tan, more natural color calf. But I put this one to the side for now. And they are quick released. So let's get this going. At the six o'clock, the long strap. Satisfying click. Click. And there you have it. SUR 307 on Blue Alligator. So used to the deploying buckles, so this is tricky. Let's get this on wrist. Yeah, boom. It's a nice strap. If that second hair were blue, hmm. I think that would set this off. Okay, let's try another one. This is a green faux alligator. I think this is Barton, Barton straps. The Barton straps are nice. It's quick release. Um, I got this on Amazon. Their straps are usually between, I guess, 20 and maybe $35 in some instances. But this one was on special. Only this color, green, which is what I was looking for, um, was about 12 bucks. So for 12 bucks, you know, get a decent strap. The calf lining in here is um, more like a suede, new buck material feeling. And then, but with these straps, they're, you know, they're pressed or stamped the, the grain pattern in it. So they pretty much all look the same when you get them. But let's get it on the watch. Let's see, six o'clock. Not satisfying, satisfying. Okay. Not satisfying, not satisfying, satisfying. And there it is. On the green. Alligator pattern or crocodile, whatever green pattern. Calf skin strap. The thing about these Barton straps that I I don't really like is uh, it's this end piece right here. It's kind of blunt, squared off. And I think for a, a dress watch, I like the pointed tip a little better. But there it is on the green. Okay, let's go to the next one.
Next up, I have this sailcloth strap. This one is by Barton also. Um, again, with that blunt end, but in this instance, it's not, I don't mind as much because uh, this is more casual. You know, you get that kind of worn in, rugged look around the holes. But look how many adjustments they have. This is far from a bespoke style strap. You know, you have so many adjustments. I guess it could be good, but you need something that could work with the masses. Appeal to a wider audience. No one, no two wrists are the same, I guess. Uh, so let's get this on six o'clock. There we go. bought the strap to go on my uh, SRP G39 field watch. And there it is. On uh, canvas or nylon or sailcloth. A nice look, nice casual look. Let me let me not do this halfway. Let's just go. There we go. And um, let's move on to the next one. How about this vintage leather strap? This one is by a company called ReZero. Got this on Amazon. Comes with the deployment buckle option. You can also get it with a traditional tang buckle option. Um, let's get it on the watch. Those guys are ripping up paper on, that they put down on the floor because they're doing some painting. So, did I get this satisfying click? Well, I think so. Hey, when you're changing watch straps, you always want to test it, wiggle it. You don't want that watch falling off of your wrist. Put this one on. And let's see. Okay, there we go. I think it's on there. Yeah. These lugs are 20 millimeters, by the way, so you have a great range of options of straps that you can use. So, well, I think I put this side in first, and then this way, what you do is you can. Get that part in. This way you're not bending the strap unnecessarily. And that's what these quick release deployments do. They extend the life of your bracelet. Did I just put that on the Seiko way? Backwards? I did. <laughs> I guess I'm feeling Japanese. But it did make for, I thought it went on easier. Let's see, let's try it this way. The what people would call the traditional or the normal way, whatever that means. Let's see if it's easier to put on the wrist and to do that action that I did, that strap saving action. It's, it's, wow curious now these types of straps are really gonna age well they're gonna develop a really nice patina over time okay let's see so get it on there and one aha uh -huh, yes it is a little more difficult I mean with some practice you could get it done I mean, whatever so, no longer goofy wrist is the way it's supposed to go. But hey, that's a nice strap there, right? I think it is. I 
It's really comfortable too. Okay, on to the next. How about the ReZero strap in black? Black calf on a deployment. Okay, let's try it out. Let's see. Six o'clock. Not satisfying. Satisfying. Okay, it's in there. 12 o'clock. Come on, girl. Okay, something's going on there. Let's see. position oh it's in no satisfying click okay so here it is on the black vintage leather strap by ReZero that in there on the point that it came with that's really nice I don't know if that's coming through well, but it's really good. Okay, on to the next. I said in another video, I think it's the one with the uh, SRP G39, that uh, when I buy my watches, I immediately think about how I'm going to rock it and uh, the strap options or bracelet options that I have. And so I bought this brace this uh, strap for the um, SUR309 this I believe is from Moran and it came on a deployment buckle as you can see there's no cutout here for the tang for uh, you know a traditional buckle um, I removed the tang, uh, not the tang, I'm sorry. I removed the the uh, deploying buckle and repurposed it on another watch. I believe uh, on my, the green watch, the SUR449. And um, that has a ostrich leather strap, genuine ostrich, satisfying at six. That genuine ostrich is from Finder Creations also. They have, this is not a commercial for them, but I think you get a good value shopping with them. And um, there it is on black. This one hasn't been bent yet from my wrist, but you get the idea. Looks great on black also. I mean, a silver doll watch, or a white face watch, as clean as this one, you can't go wrong. Even if you put it on a, something like a, a NATO style strap, you know? Or, you know, even maybe silicone. But this one is too much, I think. <laughs> but, you know, it'll work. So, here we have it. SUR 309 on straps. I really, really like this watch. This is my go-to watch. And if I only had this watch, as you can see, there are many options. Many more than what I have here, but there are many options. And it'll look like a different watch. Every, every time you wear it with a different strap, it'll feel like a new watch with a different strap. Or if you decide to go the bracelet route, 
It's just that with these quick releases, um, it's so simple to change out a strap and um, change your watch. It's like we change clothes, change your watch. Some people wear watches as a tool. Some people wear them just because, you know, time. <laughs> Some people wear them as a fashion accessory, but um, I do all of the above. And uh, I really enjoy my watches. My wife asked me when I started the YouTube channel, why watches? And I said, hey, she said, why not your shoes or your clothes or, you know, something else? And I said, cars. I said, well, those things I need, but the watch, the watches, I don't need this many watches, you know. These are my toys. And, um. As such, I could uh, just wear this watch. So slim, accurate, has loom. Is this still looming? A little bit. It's beautiful. I saw some Grand Seiko's that are very similar. This one pales in comparison when it comes to the accuracy and the movement inside, but you know, having a watch, your choice, that's a personal thing. So anyway, <laughs> I'm getting too uh, mushy, I guess, but hey, if you haven't seen my first video, go back and I'll, I'll link it in the description on this watch. And then I have a separate video. I didn't know how to pause the video to show the loom, but I have an, a separate video, a short with the loom on this watch. It looks absolutely gorgeous. Matter of fact, let's just loom it up just for fun now. I like watches with loom. Let's see. Let's do the old teeth white in the loom trick. There we go. You see all this sun around me coming through the window and my skylight, but just that a couple of seconds. Imagine what the sun would do. Is that watch gorgeous? This thing is beautiful. It's, it's truly beautiful. It's, Get those fingerprints off of there. Let's go. And that's sapphire, so you don't have to worry about the dust particles scratching up your your dial, or not your dial, your uh, your crystal, like with some of the old acrylic watches. Anything will scratch those things, but you can polish them out. Like this. You don't even have to worry about polishing it. It's, it's just amazing. Let's see if I could get a good shot. I don't know if that's coming through. But um, I'm glancing over at it with my bare eyes. No camera is better than the human eye. But anyway, there it is. Seiko SUR309 on straps. Thanks for watching. Okay, now I have to clean up this mess. Let's see, let's get this guy back on his, I don't know, let's get this guy back on his strap. It's six o'clock, wow, this thing's kind of heavy. Yeah, satisfying click, yeah. So with this airplane traffic. There we go. Get him back on his pillow.
looks good. This thing is beautiful. All right. <clears throat> Let's get this guy back. There he goes. See a little bit early. Six o'clock. There he goes. A little bit of wine. Thank God. Come on, fellas, can y'all make more noise? Just a little bit more, please. I appreciate what they're doing right there. Uh, let's get these guys back where they go. Let's see. Band strap. It's really nice. Should wear it one of these days. I think I will. Okay, now for the tough part. Let's try to get this bracelet back. You wanna go home? Hmm. Yeah, that'll work, I think. Let's see. Right. Now for the tough part. Let's get this 
this in here. going. There we go. Okay. <laughs> oh snap. Oh no, that's not right. This one's upside down. What is it? No, I got it upside down. Oh, snap. Okay, well. Let's <clears throat> tighten this. Let's loosen this. Let's get this guy out. Let's see if we can do this. Let's see. Flip it around. Haste makes waste. Okay, that should be right. Okay, let's see. in there. My eyes checked. Is this thing getting shorter? Let's see if we can get it. The spring bar looks like it's... Okay. Of course. Come on, girl. There you go. Okay. 
Hey. There we go. <laughs> All right. Let's get this going. You can go away. You come home with me. Yep. There you go.